Hello and welcome to Here Tutoring. In this video, we're going to cover the top three strategies and tricks to use for the SAT math test. So here we go. Strategy number one. Be ready to use the answer choices to make problems easier and to save time. The SAT math test is not a normal math test in the sense that unlike a normal math test that you might take for school, you don't need to show your work, you don't need to do questions the right way, and you don't need to do questions from the beginning to the end. For certain questions on the SAT, it's simply a much better idea to not start from the beginning, but rather to simply start by plugging in the answer choices into the question and see which one works. In fact, some questions are designed to test if you can use critical thinking skills to figure out this shortcut of using the answer choices, since doing certain questions the right way on the SAT would just take most students way too long to do them. One of the common strategies for using the answer choices for the SAT math test involves starting with the choice C, which would result in only needing to try one more answer choice after that at most to find the right answer. Basically, if C was too high, then you would know that the answer will be either A or B, which are lower, and so you would only need to try one of these to find the right answer. If you pick the right choice, then that's the right choice, and if you pick the wrong choice, then the other choice is the right choice. On the other hand, if your first choice C was too low, then you would do the same thing for choices D and E. However, this strategy will apply a little bit differently for the new SAT math test, which will only have four choices for each question. In this situation, it would be a better idea to start with a choice in the middle rather than the first choice, because if this middle choice ends up being too high or too low, then you can immediately eliminate one or even both of the remaining answer choices and solve the question quicker. For example, if you pick choice B to start with and you find that it's too high, then you already know the answer has to be A because C and D are also going to be too high. Using this strategy of not only starting with the answer choices for some questions, but also starting with the middle choices and eliminating other choices based on what you get with this middle choice will help you save time and work through the SAT math test more efficiently. Now, let's try two examples where using the answer choices is a better strategy than doing the questions the right way. First, let's take a look at this question. In a bag of marbles, one-third of the marbles are red, one-fourth of the marbles are blue, one-sixth of the marbles are green, and 21 marbles are yellow. How many total marbles are in the bag? Our choices are 48, 60, 72, 84, and 96. Like with the last question, we can figure out pretty quickly that this question will take a while to set up and solve, and that using the answer choices will probably be quicker and easier. So here's how we could use the answer choices. Let's start with C, which is 72. If there are 72 marbles in the bag, then one-third or 24 are red, one-fourth or 18 are blue, one-sixth or 12 are green, and 21 are yellow. This adds up to 75 marbles, which is higher than 72, so we know that 72 is too small, which means we should try D or E for our next answer choice to use. Let's try D, or 84. If there are 84 total marbles in the bag, then one-third or 28 are red, one-fourth or 21 are blue, one-sixth or 14 are green, and 21 are yellow. This adds up to 84, which is what we were aiming for, so our answer is D. As you can see, if we had started from A and moved forward, we would have needed to try three answer choices instead of just two. If we had wanted to set up and solve an equation for this question, we would have done one-third x plus one-fourth x plus one-sixth x plus 21 equals x, then we would have changed the fractions to common denominators to get four over 12x plus three over 12x plus two over 12x plus 21 equals x, then we would have combined the like terms to get 9 over 12x plus 21 equals x, which simplifies to 3 over 4x plus 21 equals x. Then we subtract 3 over 4x from both sides to get 21 equals 1 over 4x. And finally, we multiply both sides by 4 to get x equals 84, which is our answer, but that took a lot longer than just using the answer choices. Now, let's try one more example together. Let's take a look at this question. If 2n plus 1 squared minus n minus 5 squared equals 16, then what could be a value of n? Our choices are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. For this question, we should recognize that it would take quite a while to foil out the entire problem and find the roots, so this would be a perfect question to use the answer choices for. So let's start by trying choice C, which is 4. When we plug 4 in, we end up getting 9 squared minus negative 1 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 81 minus 1 equals 16, which is 80 equals 16, which doesn't work. We see that 80 is too big, so let's try one of the smaller choices. Let's try A by plugging 1 back into the original equation. When we do this, we end up getting 3 squared minus negative 4 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 9 minus 16 equals 16, which simplifies to negative 7 equals 16, which doesn't work either. 
So now we know the answer needs to be between A and C, or between one and four, so we can just pick B at this point and move on. But if we wanted to check this, we would see that plugging two back into the equation gets us five squared minus negative three squared equals 16, which simplifies to 25, minus nine equals 16, which simplifies to 16 equals 16. With this method of using the answers, we will only need to try at most two of the answer choices, whereas if we started from the beginning, we might need to try up to four choices. Now, if we wanted to actually set this question up and solve it, we would have had to distribute or foil out everything, combine all the like terms, get everything to one side so they equal zero, and then find the roots, probably using the quadratic formula, which would have taken a lot longer. Using the answer choices was a much better option for this question. Moving on, strategy number two. For some questions with variables, try plugging in random, easy numbers, rather than trying to figure out the question algebraically. For some questions, doing the question the right way, algebraically, will be really complex and end up being a mess, and not be the way the SAT actually wants you to do the question, which is to use critical thinking to find the shortcut and easy way to do the question. Let's take a look at an example where this strategy can be really helpful. First, take a look at this question. If j, k, and n are consecutive integers such as that 0 is less than j, and j is less than k, and k is less than n, and the units or ones digit of the product jn is 9, what is the units digit of k? Our choices are a, 0, b, 1, c, 2, d, 3, and e, 4. So when we read this question, the first thing we should note is that it mentions three consecutive integers. When we see something like this, we should immediately recognize that this gives us really good direction for trying random numbers since we know that we need to pick three consecutive ones and there's only a limited number of those. Next, we need to find out the constraints and what the question is asking for. We see in this problem that the constraint is that j times n, or the first number times the third number, needs to end up with a 9 in the ones place. Then, we would figure out that to get a 9 in the ones place, we would need to either do 3 times 3 or 9 times 1. We then recognize that we can't get 3 times 3, or 3 and 3, with three consecutive numbers, so our only option is 9 and 1, which might seem strange at first, but then we realize that we can have 9, 0, and 1. The question doesn't give a limit for how big the numbers can be, so we can have 19, 20, and 21, or 29, 30, and 31. So, for this question, instead of trying any fancy algebra, we simply thought of three consecutive numbers that would fit the constraint given in the problem. Finally, the problem is looking for the ones place of the k number, which is the second number, so our final answer is a, zero. Finally, strategy number three. Learn tricks for how to interpret word problems. For many students, they don't have a problem with doing the actual math, but they find it very difficult to interpret word problems so that they can actually get to the point where they need to do the math to solve the problem. Word problems are tricky because they don't just involve math. They also involve being able to understand and piece together what is being asked. So, for this part of the video, we're just going to go through four tricks for understanding and interpreting word problems for the SAT math section. First, it's normally a good idea to assign variables to the things in the problem we don't know, and to choose variables with letters that actually mean something. For example, if we are dealing with dogs and cats, Let's make our variables D for dogs and C for cats instead of random letters like X and Y, which don't really mean anything. Second, one of the key things to recognize is that the word is or was basically means equals. For example, if a problem says the number of dogs is three more than the number of cats, we would interpret this as the number of dogs equals three more than the number of cats. Or if the problem says 238 is 60% of what? then we would interpret this as 238 equals 60% of what? And here's one more example. If the problem says the price was $34.50, then we would interpret this as the price equals $34.50. Third, another thing to recognize for word problems is that a phrase like three more than the number of cats should be interpreted as three plus C. A phrase like John had five fewer cats than Sarah should be interpreted as j equals s minus 5, and a phrase like John has four times as many cats as Sarah should be interpreted as j equals four times s. In these examples, the words has or had functions in the same way as the words is and was that we just mentioned. So when you take the ACT math test, be on the lookout for key words like these that tell you what kind of math symbol you should replace them with. Fourth and finally, know what to do when a question mentions 
percent more or percent less. For word problems, percent more means that you take the difference between the two numbers and divide this difference by the smaller number and then multiply by 100, and percent less means that you take the difference between the two numbers and divide this difference by the bigger number and then multiply by 100. So, these are the top three strategies and tricks for getting a higher score on the SAT math test. Be sure to check out our other videos for more strategies for the different sections of the SAT test. Make sure to like and subscribe to support and stay updated with these videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.